What led you to suspect that the sun was continually giving off this radiation and this, this coronal atmosphere was continually streaming away? Solar corpuscular radiation, this mysterious radiation from the sun, uh, is there 24-7, and so it cannot be anything exotic, mm -hmm. because exotic things, by definition, aren't there 24-7. Uh, the comet tails always pointed away from the sun, whether they were going over the pole of the sun or around the equator, and uh, that got me to thinking about hydrodynamics, just plain hydrodynamics of the solar corona, which as soon as I wrote down the equations gave me the solar wind. It was that simple. So your theory really got its first proof from the Mariner 2 results in 1962. How did that feel to have somebody say, hey, we found it? Well, after four years of taking a lot of criticism and uh, people saying I've got it all wrong, uh, it felt pretty good, let's put it that way. It, it settled several controversies, which I didn't think were controversies, but other people did. Your paper came out in 1958, and that sparked the idea for a solar probe mission. How does it feel to be the father of solar probe? Well, I'm glad people were able to use it constructively. The solar probe never occurred to me. I, and, I think the people that are making it work now uh, should get a lot of credit for making a very difficult mission uh, operate sensibly. And uh, well, my hat's off to the experimentalists. I, I'm not an experimentalist and I know how hard it is for somebody like me to make something work. And how did you first find out that the mission was going to bear your name? Thomas Cerberfin called me on the phone and said, uh, there's a lot of talk about putting your name on that. Would you be sore at us if we did? I mean, that's essentially what he was asking. And I said, no, certainly not. Whenever we talk about this mission, people are so inspired by an idea of a probe going into the corona. What is it that you think gets people so excited and so drawn about this mission? Well, I assume it's the same reason that I got excited about it. This is a journey into Never Never Land, you might say, where it's too hot for any sensible spacecraft to function. But some very clever engineering and construction uh, has succeeded in making what looks like a very workable instrument. I don't know what it is that intrigues other people, I guess, but uh, uh, I suppose it's the same thing of going into such fierce temperatures and making rational measurements.